name's Robert. This is uh, Robert from Cali. I want to talk to you about this book. It's called The Master Key System. What brought my attention to this book is another one that I read, which was called As a Man Thinketh was written in, I believe, 1910, or published in 1910, 1912. So it's been over 100 years, and there was some amazing knowledge in that book about what you think you are, you become. Basically, the three steps that I've seen in these geniuses of philosophers, scientists, all these people who have been very successful in what they do, or at least find some kind of path towards maybe enlightenment or happiness, success, whatever you want to call it, basically is you act like the person that would have those things already and the actions that you take, the steps that you take will align with the person that you want to become and you already are with the steps that you take. I want to be a successful student and what do successful students do? They study, plan out their schedule, take the time to prepare, and so me doing these things, I don't work towards being a good student. I do what already is required of being a good student. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to read about different books, uh, philosophies like this. But this book, just the first chapter, I'm going to be talking to you about the highlights of the first chapter. And the first week is essentially you sit down and let your mind wander. Meditate for 15 to 30 minutes, three to four times this week. Um, and it's Wednesday, so I have Wednesday, Thursday. So I have five days, I'm gonna do them tomorrow, yeah. So if you want to read the book, you can. I'm not gonna read the whole book or anything like that, but at the end of the first chapter, it has, I think, 40 different things for advices. So come back to this video, Part one, here we go, week one. Come back to this video, listen to these words and really think about what they mean. And if you want to actually know what uh, it means a little deeper, then I suggest you really buy this book. I bought this at Barnes and Noble. Uh, there must be other versions of this. So it's called The Master Key System by Charles F. Hanel, I believe is the pronunciation of the name. Listen up, sit back, relax. Uh, this is just going to be literally me talking here. Part 1. That much gathers more is true on every plane of existence. And that loss leads to greater loss is equally true. Mind is creative and conditions, environment, and all experiences in life are the result of our habitual or predominant mental attitude. The attitude of mind necessarily depends upon what we think. Therefore, the secret of all power, all achievement, and all possession depends upon our method of thinking. This is true because we must be before we can do. And we can do only to the extent that we are. And what we are depends upon what we think. We cannot express powers that we do not possess. The only way by which we may secure possession of power is to become conscious of power. And we can never become conscious of power until we learn that all power is from within. There is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty, and although invisible, its forces are mighty. The world within is governed by mind. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. And since the world within is subject to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. The world without is a reflection of the world within. What appears without is what has been found within. In the world within, may be found infinite wisdom, infinite power, infinite supply of all that is necessary, waiting for unfoldment, development, and expression. If we recognize these potentialities in the world within, they will take form within the world without. Harmony in the world within 
will be reflected in the world without by harmonious conditions, agreeable surroundings, the best of everything. Harmony in the world within results in optimism and affluence. Affluence within results in affluence without. The world without reflects the circumstances and the conditions of the consciousness within. If we find wisdom in the world within, we shall have the understanding to discern the marvelous possibilities that are latent in this world within, and we shall be given the power to make these possibilities manifest in the world without. The world within is the practical world in which the men and women of power generate courage, hope, enthusiasm, confidence, trust, and faith by which they are given the fine intelligence to see the vision and the practical skill to make the vision real. Reread that one. Re-listen to that one right now. Life is an unfoldment, not accretion. What comes to us in this world without is what we already possess in the world within. All possession is based on consciousness. All gain is the result of an, accumu of an accumulative consciousness. All loss is the result of a scattering consciousness. It is through the subconscious that we are connected with the universal mind and brought into relation with the infinite constructive forces of the universe. It is the coordination of these two centers of our being and the understanding of their functions which is the greatest secret of life. With this knowledge we can bring the objective and subjective minds into conscious cooperation and thus coordinate the finite and the infinite. Our future is entirely within our own control. It is not at the mercy of any capricious or uncertain external power. All agree that there is but one principle or consciousness pervading the entire universe, occupying all space, and being essentially the same in kind at every point of his presence. It is all-powerful, all wisdom, and always present. All thoughts and things are within itself. It is all in all. There's but one consciousness in the universe able to think, and when it thinks its thoughts become objective things to it. And when it thinks its thoughts become objective things to it. As this consciousness is omnipresent, it must be present within every individual. Each individual must be a manifestation of that omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent consciousness. As there is only one consciousness in the universe that is able to think, it necessarily follows that your consciousness is identical with the universal consciousness. Or, in other words, all mind is one mind. There is no dodging this conclusion. The consciousness that focuses in your brain cells is the same consciousness which focuses in the brain cells of every other individual. Each individual is but the individualization of the universal, the cosmic mind. The universal mind is static or potential energy. It simply is. It can manifest only through the individual, and the individual can manifest only through the universal. They are one. The ability of the individual to think is his ability to act on the universal and bring it into manifestation. Human consciousness consists only in the ability of man to think. Walker says, Mind in itself is believed to be a subtle form of static energy from which arises the activities called thought, which is the dynamic phase of mind. Mind is static energy. Thought is dynamic energy. The two phases of the same thing. Thought is therefore the vibratory force formed by converting static mind into dynamic mind. As the sum of all attributes is contained in the universal mind, which is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, these attributes must be present at all times with their potential form in every individual. Therefore, when the individual thinks, thought is compelled by its nature to embody itself in an objectivity or condition which will correspond with its origin. You know, I think I'm going to leave it there. For this week. I'm not going to read all of them. Um, but there are some questions. What is the world without in its relation to the world within? The world without is a reflection of the world within. So the world within and the world without. The world within is your mind. The world without is 
your reality. That's that's how I'm. That's what I'm understanding. I didn't understand it for quite a while, but I tried to think it through over and over, and that kind of makes sense to me. And that's what they're trying to say. The world without is like without your mind. You know, the the world itself is separate, but not. If I if I'm explaining correctly, it's kind of like a deep uh, translation, um, a deep meaning that I can't really translate perfectly. Basically, the world within is your mind, inside of your mind. The world without is everything that's outside of the inside of your mind. But that the outside, your reality, is created by what you focus on because what you focus on is, let's say, like I said, that example of me being a good student, me doing things that a good student does it makes me the good student already by taking those actions that a good student would do so be who you want to be before you are and you'll be it that's something huge that a lot of people just put aside push aside but i think it's very necessary for you to hear the things that are in this book and I know that it was just a lot, but I really hope that you take this into consideration. I want to keep making these videos and I, I will. I have a lot planned and something that I've learned is what's been in this book. I really have been reading a lot. I've been taking classes. I, I thankfully have the opportunity to keep reading, keep learning and pushing towards my dream and this is it me creating these videos and me sharing what I have learned in the world to help others the best way that I can hopefully this helped um, definitely subscribe for more I upload these kinds of videos uh, and cinematic videos you'll be seeing them very soon I have a new camera on the way I bought a cinema camera my first cinema camera ever and I'll be making short films one of them, hopefully, including this guy, including the scream mask. I'm super excited, guys. Uh, if this helps you at all, please let me know in the comment section. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this book. Uh, if you've read the book, if you haven't, if you're going to. But I'll see you later in the next one. See ya.